Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 16. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at creating our ammo count mechanics and we'll also have a quick look at some reflection probes. So before I do anything, there is something that I still kind of want to work with, with the mechanics that we have. I feel like the gun firing is just too slow and cumbersome, so I want to quickly show you how we can use animations to speed things up a little, or rather re-edit the animation. So I'm going to start by going to my gun, which is the M9 right here. And remember, the animations are in this folder right here. So I'm going to go to my animation tab with the M9 selected, press the record button to restart, and I'm going to cut it down by half. So I'm going to bring my first section, the first couple of frames here, bring them to about there, which is the fourth frame. And then I'm going to finish the gun by bringing it to about the 10th frame. So it's going to be quite a, quite a quick process firing, as we can see right here. 10. There we go. So I'm going to press the record button again, stop that. Next, I'm going to go to the muzzle flash right here, and it's the same sort of thing. I'm going to press record again and bring the first section of muzzle flash to uh, frame four and the second to about frame nine rather than frame 10. So it's going to, again, be a quick process. So I just want to quickly check this out. Like I said, I feel like it was too slow, too cumbersome. It didn't quite look right, whereas this time it might look a little bit more like we are firing a gun. So let's quickly pick up our gun and fire a few shots. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. So ammo count. The first thing we're going to want to do is create some UI. So we've got like a bit of a section or a segment of the screen which dictates our ammo count. So let's go to uh, game object, UI, not camera, game object, UI, and we'll start with, in fact, we'll start with a panel because we'll have a little section down the bottom right of the screen that tells us, you know, this is our ammo. So double click panel and you can see it covers the entire screen. So we're going to have this anchored down to the bottom right position. I'm going to have zero, zero, and then I'm going to change the width to something a bit more relevant. So we'll have it maybe 100 across and maybe 50 down. So let's zoom in again and let's bring it into position using the rec tool. So maybe about here and let's press play. So that looks okay. Maybe it needs to be a little bit longer, so I might have that as 120 and height as 40. So I'm just going to like that. You can take as much time as you'd need to. Again, this is all just something for me to kind of rush through. Uh, I'm going to change the colour. I'm going to have the alpha a bit darker, so I'm going to have it as 200. I'm also going to have it as a very dark grey, I think. So let me see how that looks on the screen. Yep, that's not too bad. So within this panel, I'm going to actually have the UI text. So right click on panel, UI, text. And this is going to be our ammo count. So by default, I'm going to have it as zero. I'm going to change the color to white. And I'm going to have it aligned nicely about there and probably increase the font size right here. So we've dealt with font before and size and everything. So I'm not going to go through this again. We're just setting up the UI in this case. So let's have this as 36. Maybe that's a little bit too big. Maybe 30. Still think it's too big, but let's see how it is. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. We'll stick with that. I'm going to add a little bit of extra UI here, just to kind of you know, give the impression of how much ammo we have. Uh, in fact, before I do, I'm going to bring it this way and bring it to about here. So as obviously if we have multiple digits, so we have, for example, 12 ammo, 12 shots, then you know we can fit the extra number here. So game object, UI, uh, raw image, something real quick. Let's decrease the size and just do something real quick to make it look you know, a bit more, well, rather than just a number in a box. So I'm gonna put that there, uh, duplicate, change the size of this again, give it like kind of some ammo effect. Or control, press D, duplicate. Let's bring it out. So we'll make it look like some kind of icon for bullets. So we can just do that. And we'll have that. Duplicate, bring to there, duplicate, bring to there, duplicate, bring to there. 
maybe. So that's our ammo count. Again, it's something you can deal with if you want to. This is just something that I'm quickly putting together to kind of make sense of it all. Uh, I'm going to bring all those raw images inside the panel. So I've just held down control there and selected them, or you can hold down shift and select multiple. So this is our ammo. This is our number that we need to maintain. And we can do all that if we go to scripts and create a global ammo script, just like we did with the global health system. We'll do that with global ammo. Right click, create C sharp script, global ammo. So the idea of this survival horror is going to be ammo is very, very scarce, just because that's the style I would like to go for. If you want to have a, an abundance of ammo, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to go for the low ammo kind of route. So to make this work, firstly, we need to add in the namespace using unity engine dot UI because we're dealing with the UI elements, aren't we? And we can get rid of void update and any, sorry, void start and any annotations because we don't need them. So the first variable is going to be a static variable and it's going to be our ammo count. So public static int ammo count, semicolon. The next one is going to be the ammo display object. So public game object ammo display. And I always like to have an internal integer when we ever, whenever we use static so we can see in the inspector panel what that number actually is. So public int internal ammo semicolon. And all we need to do in void update is make internal ammo equal to ammo count semicolon. And then we need to display that number in that ammo section. So what we'd do is we'd have uh, ammo display dot get component and in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text is equal to double quote because it obviously is a text value, but we're putting in a number. So double quote just to say it's text, but it's not really just fooling unity plus ammo count semicolon and save that script so let's head back to unity and do we have a specific object that we could attach this to i don't think we really have um, any control object do we so let's go to game object and let's go to create empty and we'll just have ammo control and then we just need to attach the global ammo script to there. And in our canvas, if I can find it, we just need to attach that text there. So I'm going to rename this text to ammo display. And then just drag and drop that into our variable right there. So that's that set up. Now, the next thing is we don't really need this until we actually pick up ammo to begin with. So let's go and turn off this panel. But what I'm going to do is rename it to ammo panel. And again, this is something that you can work with and build yourself. You know, there's no set way of doing this. I've just given a quick example of how we can do this. And I'm going to turn it off up here. Right, next, let's actually get that ammo working. If you remember, we had ammo pickup right here. So let's go into ammo pickup. And what we need to do is add in another variable to dis re basically redisplay that little uh, UI that we've just done. So public game object, and we'll have, what should we call it? Ammo display box. And then on void trigger enter, we'll go ammo display box dot set active true. But at the same time, we need to give ourselves a certain amount of ammo. And let's say this particular box just gives us seven shots. So all we need to do is global ammo dot ammo count plus equals seven semicolon and save that script. So effectively what's happening here is I'm actually going to set this ammo panel back on just so we can see it actually working real time. So when we start the game, we can see that we have no ammo. 
However, whether we have a gun or not, as long as we pick up this ammo over here, it should give us... Oh, I just realized I have not actually set that. We need to set the uh, ammo box, ammo display. Of course, we need to set that on. So again, I think it's a case of sometimes when you're building upon scripts, it could be a case of forgetting to do certain things because that script already exists on your object. You just need to add in the extra variables. I, I do that quite a bit sometimes. But there we go. We've picked up that ammo and you can see we have seven shots. So that's all good and well. Now, the question is, can we fire that gun? Can we fire it if we have no ammo? No, we can't. So... Let's make that mechanic work so as we can only fire when we have bullets. So on our FPS controller and the M9, we have that fire pistol script. Let's go into that fire pistol script and we need to add in a couple of extra variables here. Or rather reference to the variables, I should say. So in void update, we have if we press the fire button. Yep, that's all good and well. If firing is equal to false, then we do this. However, what we need to also put here is if firing is uh, equal to, I should say false, but it could go there. You can either nest this or you can add it here. And what we need to do is check here. The global ammo actually has ammo in it. So if input dot get button down is fire one and and we do that with the double ampersand there. Global ammo dot ammo count is greater than or equal to one then we do the following so what we're doing here is we're saying if our input is fire and our ammo count is greater than greater than or equal to one then we can fire if it isn't then we can't do anything really but what we do need to do is here before we start the coroutine we can put global ammo dot ammo count minus equals one semicolon and save so every time we fire we should now theoretically be able to take a bullet off and when we run out of bullets we can no longer fire you know we're screwed pretty much so let's just make sure it looks like there's oh that, that's because of the last script that's fine so now let's press play and let's test this out so, fingers crossed, we should be able to go here. We'll try pick up our gun and fire, and hopefully we shouldn't be able to. Nope, pressing my mouse button, and not firing anything. So, let's pick up some ammo. We have seven, and there we go. We've got five shots left, so let's shoot our zombie. And he's dead. We've got one more shot. And now we can't fire anymore. So there is more that we can do to all this uh, mechanics here. You know, we can add in some clicking sounds, say no ammo, which I'll tell you what, we'll probably do next episode. We'll also have some uh, sound effects for picking up our ammo as well. So we'll do that next time as well. So last thing I want to do in this tutorial is quickly touch upon reflection probes. They're quite handy, especially in this style of game. Whether you want to reflect things or not, they don't necessarily reflect things. So to get this in action, what I'm going to do is double click on our FPS controller to zoom in. And it's something that you can probably play around with between now and the next tutorial. So if we go to game object, go to light and down here we have reflection probe. Click it. Things may turn blue. The reason they turn blue is basically because of the skybox. But if we change the type from baked to real time, this now allows us to control what's happening in the world around us. And it really is handy. So a good example of this. If we go to our main light source right here, which is the direction of light, we can turn this off up here. Doesn't make much of a difference, does it? Now, this is where the clever play comes in because it does make a bit of a difference here. So if we filter here and type in light, we can see testing light and light source. So let's turn off testing light. Uh, yeah, let's turn off testing light and light source. So testing light, 
select let's turn that off and you can see it's become much darker now however if we select our reflection probe we can actually set the intensity to be higher and you can see just how much that actually lights up based on this light right here now like i said it's something that you can probably play around with it's not necessarily something that you know you would want in your game it's something to work with uh, you could say uh, there's not a lot to reflection probe as it stands this kind of comes in a little bit more later on especially when we have development really going but you can select things like box projection the importance doesn't really matter too much but ultimately i think it depends on how you want to visualize your game the position of the reflection probe as well also makes a difference so for example if we moved it over here you would see this section lights up so at the same time let's keep box projection on and let's also change intensity to two in fact let's have it maybe three so you can see how this is working we could also duplicate this light this torch right here bring it over this side of the room and again you can see how this is impacting the actual reflection now if you technically go to this wall and change the source to albedo alpha you'll see this kind of effect occur now this happens because of the actual reflection probe and you may want that style in your game i think it's entirely up to you so i'm just going to press play and you can see how this actually looks real time it's not exactly perfect but it gives it a different look that you know the game actually presents so i'm going to change that back to metallic alpha and I'm going to take the reflection probe over here and press play. So again, you can see just how much this is giving off just within this section. And if we turn the reflection probe off and press play, again, it gives it that little bit of difference. And again, I think it's up to you, the style that you want to aim for in this position you know it's your game at the end of the day there's things that we can do and play around with so one final example if i turn the reflection pro back on and bring it into this section over here you can see just how much of an impact this has this is where you have to be careful the reason this is happening is again because of the skybox however because this is all open up here that's the reason this generally happens. So if we were to basically play the game, you'd see this kind of glitch occurring. Now, uh, so I did say one final thing, but I'm gonna go for another final thing here. The lighting in your game can actually depend on how you want it uh, to be, for example, positioned. Is that the best term to use? I, I think it all depends on um, you know the position of your light how you want it to appear how you want it you know just in general so i'm going to get rid of that reflection probe and i think it's something that you guys can probably work with if you want to basically you know have it but we will get to a point where we create some um i forgot what it's called <laughs> post-processing effects so we're going to be using post-processing uh, so what i'm going to do is rather than have auto on the render mode i'm going to have important on all my lights now this won't matter too much in such a small scene but you will notice um, weird lighting effects start to disappear if you do have them set as important and as i keep saying lighting is it's, it's massively important not just in a survival horror game but in any game at all so it's something for you to keep in mind so with that in mind let's uh, talk about the next tutorial the next tutorial we are going to make it look a bit more like survival horror so i think we're going to play around with this lighting a little bit more uh, we'll start looking at a sky box we'll enclose the room and do you know what i mentioned it nice so i think we'll take a look at post-processing in the next tutorial as well because i think that'll be fun to play with and it'll be great to actually see how the game can look so guys until that next tutorial thank you very much for watching